let us worship the Lord, ascribing to him the glory due to his name. We lift up our voices in praise and adoration. And this is In the Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr., thanking you as always on this lovely day the Lord has made and wherever you are. Whatever you're doing, I just pray that the Lord Jesus Christ is leading the way. Now, people, my voice sounds a little odd today because I went to a concert of one of my favorite singers. I've been on the road, in and out of the heat, in and out of the humidity, and I believe I have a slight cold. So please uh, keep me in your prayers as I deal with this summer cold. There's nothing worse than a summer cold to dampen uh, things during the day. But the Lord is with me, and I just uh, keep in your prayers as I try to fight this cold off because I still have preaching duties at my church here in Dubois, Pennsylvania. So let us get started. Our morning scripture reading comes from 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 21, which reads as follows. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Amen. And of course, for those who do believe out there, and if you do need prayer, be sure to go to our website, get-prayer.com. Submit your prayer request there. You can also find a link to the podcast amongst other tools as well. And speaking of tools, one of our greatest tools is prayer. So at this time, let us focus our hearts and minds on talking to God as we begin this day with prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts longing for the joy that only you can provide. In a world filled with challenges and uncertainties, we look for the happiness that comes from your presence and your love. You are our source of true joy and contentment. Lord, we release our worries. We give up these fears and these burdens to you completely, not taking nothing back from the throne. Fill us with your peace that surpasses all understanding. Help us see the beauty in each day, the blessings in every moment, and the joy in the simplest of things. Help us not be so busy to where we miss things you present to us to encourage us to brighten the day. Teach us to trust in your plan for our lives, knowing that you work all things for our good. Let your love fill our hearts so that we may spread happiness to those around us. And may our lives be a reflection of that joy, shining brightly in the darkness. And we thank you, Jesus Christ, for the gift of your presence, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the promise of eternal life with you. In all things, may we find our happiness in you, our Savior, our King. In the name of Jesus Christ, through the intervention of the Holy Spirit, we now pray that these words resonate with someone out there as they look to you for the answers through the confusion, through whatever is going on. And of course, in all things, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So our topic today is releasing all to receive all. Releasing all to receive all. A lot of times we as believers do not give everything to God. Did you know that? A lot of times we think we are. We think, well, we, sometimes we only give to God what we want him to know, what we want him to see. And we don't surrender everything because somewhere in that everything could be a problem that we know it's a problem, but we haven't changed it. And as a result, we keep that close to heart, like a deck of cards that we know we got a, a royal flush in our hand, but we don't want to let anybody see that. That's the level of concealment that we do with our sin, with our problems. There are certain problems you will give to God 
And then there are certain problems you just keep to yourself because you know, well, you might be the problem. And I'm not being mean about that, but it's true. Sometimes we are the problem. Sometimes it's not just other people. It's not just events. It's not temptation. It is you. You may be the problem. And it's hard to look into ourselves because no one likes to evaluate themselves. No one likes to evaluate what their life is like or where their life is right now because it might make you depressed. It might make you sad. But here's the thing, though. When you turn it all over to the Lord Jesus Christ, the things you've been aspiring to have, the things that you've been wanting to do with your life, you realize, first of all, it's not yours. It's the Lord's. When we give ourselves to Jesus Christ, we give everything, our lives, the marriage, the family, the bills, the job. And the Lord prescribes the things that we want and need in these areas of the life that he's given us. And he says, okay, he said, now that I'm leading everything completely, here's what you can do with it. And so we take these things and we cultivate these things. And as a result, we still get the lives that we desire. It's just that we're getting them through the Lord and not through our own means and methodologies. So right now, our scripture is um, Psalm 32, by the way. Uh, what I want to do is, we're going to, I want you to listen to Psalm 32. I'm not going to put the words up this time around. It's uh, 11 verses. It's a bit much. Excuse me. And so you're going to listen to these words. And then from there, we're going to get started. Psalm 32, starting at verse 1. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I keep when I kept silent, my bones wasted away for my groaning through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked. But the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the ones who trust in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in his heart. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your already blessed word. Someone out there right now is wrestling a battle against themselves which is totally unnecessary to do. For you're here with us. You're, you're our comforter. You are our deliverer. You are our leader, our Lord, our King, the Alpha and Omega. And so we pray, Father, that they're able to release everything and all things to you so that they may, uh, may be a light for you in the darkness, representing the kingdom as ambassadors should. These and all things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Releasing all to receive all. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about the fact in order to get what you want in this life, you got to get, you got to give it. I told my sons several years ago when they were young, starting out to work, I said, in order to get what you want, you got to give a lot. You're going to, you're going to give way more money than you are going to make in these first parts of your life. Yeah, you know, you may, it may not be the best rate, but you'll have some money that you can learn how to work and how to grind and do all that, all the things that we do on this earth called working. But here's the thing with Jesus Christ, though. You don't have to do, you just give, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And the work that is put in begins with you simply walking with the Lord. He's done all the heavy lifting. He has done all the heavy lifting. You don't have to do that. 
But let's break this. Let's break this psalm down. Understanding verses one and two is the joy of forgiveness, the releasing of guilt to receive blessing, the releasing of guilt to receive blessing. You can experience the great joy and relief that comes from releasing your guilt and receiving God's forgiveness. Many of you out there right now are dealing with this. You're having a hard time releasing the guilt of how you have lived. You're releasing, you you can't release the guilt of how you treated people in your old life, in your old self. And now that you've come into with the Lord Jesus Christ, you've come into this relationship, you have come into this understanding of the grace that he gives us. It's hard for you to truly accept it because you're still living in the shame of what was. Notice I said was, because that was in the past. This is now. And it's time for you to come out of the past of what you used to be and come into the present of what you are now and look forward with Jesus Christ into what's going to be. And Christ knows that because now you are, you are with him. You are, you are abiding in the vine. And so now you are living in a, in a place to where, yes, you did some bad things in your old self. But guess what you can do? If it really bothers you that much, carry it to the Lord. Do you know the Lord has released you from this? Don't you know the Lord has released you from the guilt, from the shame, from the looking back and feeling bad about yourself and the people you've affected? Don't you know the Lord has a plan for that right now? Don't you know the Lord is going, if he wants you to go back and say something to those people or uh, do something with said event that occurred, he will allow that to happen if he wants to, or he might want you to walk forward. Walk forward. What happened back there and what happened right now, that is what we call a testimony. This, this is where people don't, we, we're, in a, we're in a world that wants to rewrite history, wants to change history, all these things, but your history is valuable because it shows non-believers what the power of God can do, the transforming nature of the cross and how it transformed you from someone who was doing everything wrong under the sun to being a person that is telling people the way to get bread. See, but y'all don't see it that way because you're letting the world tell you about how you are to define your past. I know some ladies right now that won't tell their husband nothing about their past, but they want to get married, though. Husbands are doing the same. Why? Because you're so afraid that it's not going to work out if I tell her everything or if I tell him every, anything. You know, everything is going on with me. But the thing is, though, in order to come together as one, you got to let it all go. You have to let that go right now. And here's, here's why we do this. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Don't you realize the day that Jesus Christ, his blood on the cross has covered your sins? Do you not realize this? Or are you just going to church to feel good? You should have a working relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, walking with him every day, reading the scriptures, praying daily. Because if you did, you wouldn't feel the way you're feeling right now. And then there is the weight of silence. Do you realize how hard it is to keep it all inside of you. We release that concealment to receive the healing that you need. Some of y'all need to just need to get it off your chest. Just get it off your chest, be done with it. But no, you keep it inside. Don't you know that the medical professionals have already said when we, when we do that to ourselves, we eat more, the blood pressure goes up, all sorts of medical problems arise because You just won't let this thing go. And it becomes toxic to your body because your mind is unclean. Your mind is toxic. All the thoughts, all the feelings, everything is just bottled up in your body. And in your body wasn't meant for that. Let whatever you have done, whatever the sin is, let it go. Just let it go. The reason why you see folks, why, and you might say, well, I've seen other folks do this, and now they have PTSD, and this, this, that, and the third. They're not carrying it to God. They're carrying it to a mental health professional. Now, let me pause right there and say this. Those people have their place in society, without a doubt. They really, really do. But 
if you are a believer, they are a tool to help you. But Jesus Christ is the way. We'll ever forget that. Understand the burden of holding on to unconfessed sin and the healing that follows when we release our secrets to God. You are holding something inside of you. You know you're doing wrong. You know it's wrong. And you know if anybody found out, they're going to tell you it's wrong. They're not judging you. They are holding you accountable. Okay? That's accountability. That's not judging. We, we live in this society where people believe that that is judging. No, that's not, it's not judging. We're holding you accountable to who you are as an adult, who you are as a man, as a woman, as a Christian. And if you don't like that, well, it simply shows where change is needed, obviously. Not only is there the weight of silence where we are able to release this concealment to receive the healing. Confession brings freedom. It releases the sin to receive grace. Look back at verses three and four real quick where it says, when I kept silent, my bones waste away through the groaning all day long. It's already causing physical problems. This is already becoming an issue. <laughs> Excuse me. This is already being an issue for you. And because it's an issue for you, people can see it. You're, you're wasting away. But here's the thing, though. Confession brings freedom. You can release that sin right now and receive the grace of Jesus Christ. Look at verse five. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover my iniquity. You bear it all. Just be, like I said, just be done with it. I don't know what you're holding on to it for. Bear it all to the Lord. Bear it all. Everything comes along with it. And he tells himself, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And guess what happens? And you forgave the guilt of my sin. But the only way to get to that point is to understand the discovery of the transforming power of confessing our sins and receiving God's grace and forgiveness. But you've got to confess your sins first. Some of y'all want to be forgiven for things you know you're doing wrong, but you're not confessing it. You just want somebody to forgive you. And you want to do the unspoken. Well, I'm doing, I got an unspoken sin. Nah, nah, nah. Okay, well, are you asking for forgiveness? If, if we're Christians, we should be able to come together and talk about what's going on. And, and root this thing out. Have an accountability buddy. Have somebody you can go to. If it's not everybody, I totally get it. But have somebody you can go to and confess and hey, here's what I got going on in my life. I need some help. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to stop. Can somebody help me? You should, be ha you should have that one person in your church, that one person in your Bible study. If it's not everybody, okay. You don't want your business on the streets. I totally get it. Find that one believer, though, that one intercessory that you can come alongside you and help you get through this. Why? Because God's our safe haven. And as he is our safe haven, <clears throat> Excuse me, I told y'all I wasn't feeling well. As our safe haven, we can release the fear to receive the protection. That, that's a safe haven. You go there, you know, to be protected. This is how we learn how to release our fears to God. And God allows us to receive his protection and deliverance. Let me be very clear. When you go to God first, before you go to your friends, before you go to your relatives and, and everybody else, when you go to God first, this problem usually ends very quickly. When you go to prayer first, husbands, wives, this problem usually ends very quickly. God recognizes that you're trying to, there's got to be a solution to this. God equips you with the strength. God equips you with the ability to not be shamed when you confess it to your wives or husbands, to your friends, whatever, whatever the situation is, to get, it, to get it out there and be done with it. He equips you with the strength you need to do that. And as a result, it's over, it's done. And you can get through it. He'll give you the strength to get through it. Maybe you hurt somebody. Maybe 
you have deceived somebody. But once you get it out there, you can get through this. And I know that's difficult because you're thinking, well, I'm going to lose friends. I'm going to lose loved ones. But do you want to lose your life, though? When I confess sin, heart attack, stroke, getting all worked up, working to hide it consistently. I mean, how long can you keep that up? This is why adulterers always end horribly. This is, is first of all, it goes against the, the one of the Ten Commandments for starters. All right. This is why theft ends horribly. Why? This this is why the Ten Commandments was put in place. <laughs> okay. To, to ensure these things did not happen. Everything you're doing right now, whatever derivative it is, comes from the Ten Commandments. There's a rule out there in the Ten Commandments that tells you not to do that. You can split the hairs, whatever the case is. Whatever you're doing that is wrong, more than likely, it goes back to the Ten Commandments. I'm about to show of it. There's nothing that you're doing that does not go back to the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is very accurate. So when you're sitting there and you're dealing with these things, if you want the protection that you need, you got to learn how to release your fears of God because God allows us to receive his protection and his deliverance. Just turn back. That's all God wants you to do. Repent and turn away from what you're doing. That's it. Confess and repent. That's it. Let's get it out of the way. What's the pathway to correction? Have you ever asked somebody who has done something wrong to you but you don't want to lose a friendship, but at the same time, you want things to get better for him or her. Ask them, okay, what's the, what's the pathway for correction for this? What are we going to do to ensure this does not happen again? And if they can't give you one, or they just want you to forgive them without any real repentance, that's deception. Because basically they're saying, oh, I'm sorry that you got upset about what I'm doing, but I'm not changing what I'm doing. But I want you to forgive me, though that I made you upset. They're not repentant. And in that case, don't react, respond, and respond with God's word. And if they still don't listen, if they still want to continue using hurtful things against you, put up a boundary until they're able to work on themselves or until God reveals himself to them and move on. I've had to do this on numerous occasions. And it's not that I'm judging anybody. It's just that at the same time, this is the life that God gave me. This is like it's the life that God gave them. And if they are not going to change, if they're going to be unrepentant, if they're going to be toxic, if they're going to be a problem, well, it's not fair that I got to have that problem around me because some of y'all might be like, well, I'm just, going to, I'm just going to love them through it. And you will love themselves right to hell. And you're going to love yourself right to the hospital because you're going to be keep getting upset. You're going to keep getting happy, having your house disrupted. And before you know it, you're not happy now. And they're going on because they're not going to change. Sometimes you got to take your hands off situations and let God deal with that. And speaking of that, we release control to receive direction. Do you understand? You understand where I'm going here with this? You know, in order to, you got to release your, your, your hands off the situation to receive the direction which God wants you to go. Embrace the guidance and the wisdom that comes from releasing control and allowing God to direct our paths. Some of y'all want too much control. That's why this sin is where it's at right now. So even when you come out of this sinful condition, you've confessed it, you're repenting. Okay, well now take a new path and that is through Jesus Christ. But you got to release that. You got you to release that control that you, that you have on your quote unquote life and let God take control of your life. You've got to do that. And then there's releasing the sin to receive love. As we look at the outcomes of releasing sin to receive God's unfailing love versus holding on to the wickedness and its resulting woes, we can obviously see the differences here. There's a lack of peace. There's a lack of tranquility. There's a lack of happiness. You're so busy trying to be right. That you're, that you're feeling wrong, you're living wrong, but you want, but, it, but at times it might feel good. There are so many out there, people out there right now that don't even know what their identity is because they're so lost in feeling good and feeling right and serving their body. And they, they, they want to, they want to be pleasured. They want to be feeling in a certain way. And maybe, who knows, maybe somewhere along the line, they felt rejected. Maybe they felt isolated. And finally, Satan comes along and says, well, I've got somebody here. 
you know, but you got to bend some rules to have what you're looking for. And before you know it, you find yourself so far away from glory, you, you can't even see the cross. Here's the thing, though, you can turn around and walk back to it. You can turn around and walk back to it. Because you may find yourself in a place where it's almost hurtful to you to talk about Jesus. Because you know if the light of glory ever shined on you right now, you could, people are going to see all the dirt, all the filth on you. And you don't want that seen. It's like a black light. Everything looks clean on the outside until you show that black light. And oh, my goodness, there are so many things you can see with a black light. Oh, man, you'd be like, I don't even know if I want to be around this. And that's what you fear. Jesus Christ is that light. It shines beyond what is seen into the unseen realm of your life. And people are able to see what you don't want them to see. And as a result, you feel bad. You feel shame. You feel depressed and stressed. Why? Because the truth is finally coming out. You let that truth come out. Don't let Satan hold you by the, 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 the ball and chain of well, if you let them see it. They're going to hate you. He's trying to keep you in his realm. I'm trying to get you out of his realm. And then there is releasing the burden to receive the joy. And that's why you release all this unspoken sin. It's to release the burden of that sin, to receive the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to celebrate the joy and the gladness that comes from releasing the burdens of sin and receive the full measure of God's redemption. Don't be scared. Don't be shamed. Don't all these other feelings. Let them go. Just come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let them let everybody see it for themselves. Yeah, you went to jail. Yeah, we get it. Yeah, you said some wrong things. We get it. You posted some wrong things. We get it. Bring it all to the Lord. Confess it. Admit the fact that you're a sinner that needs saving. Admit the fact that you're not perfect. Admit it to the Lord Jesus Christ. And get around a body of believers that can help you in your walk with him. If you're so worried about being judged, you're going to, be, you're going to find yourself in a very lonely prison of sin. Because accountability is not judging. Accountability is understanding that someone loves you enough to let you know when you're doing something wrong. And right now in this world, that's the problem with so many of our people. They, we, we live in a world where people don't want to hear they're wrong. They just want to be validated over and over. Even in their destruction, they just want to be validated over and over again. That is a lie of Satan. That's a lie. People who love you will tell you when something you said or something you did is wrong. People who sit there and let you just do anything. And they know it's wrong. They know it's incorrect. They know it's spiritually incorrect. When they, when they do that and they let you, those are not friends. They don't love you. Because you got to be brave enough. You got to be, as I tell my family, sometimes you got to be good enough to be the bad guy. You got to be good enough to stand up and say, hey, I love you. I totally get it. But you're wrong. In fact, all of you are wrong. I have done this. Now, does it, they deplete the friend list? Yes, it does. But you know what, though? They were never with me in the first place, and then they, they were never with you. Because if they can't understand that you care enough about them to let them know what they're doing is destructive, let them know what they're doing is wrong, and they must be validated and affirmed and accepted 24-7, seven days a week, all year long, then you ain't got a friendship. You got a compliance notice. And that's not friendship. I would hope that I have friends that will let me know when I cross the line and I got to come back. And I hope you have those friends. And if you don't have those friends, hey, contact us by our website, get prayercom and we will pray for you to find those friends. But if you're going to receive all, you got to release, you got to release all of this foolishness because that's the only way to get it. You got to surrender it all to Jesus Christ. Don't surrender to your pastor. Don't surrender to your church. Surrender it to Jesus Christ and let your pastor and your church help you. But you got to give that to God through Christ Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit intervene in your life and let them know what's going on. So until next time, may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we'll see you next week. And hopefully I'll feel a little bit better. <laughs> you take care.